You guys know the routine. Share, share the link. Invite your friends, your family members. If you know somebody who's getting into the goat business or trying to get into the goat business, this is a good one. This is a good one because I'm going to go over all the positives that we think goes with getting into the goat business. I'm going to go over them. And somebody may say, yo, you guys do this already, but we have to repeat certain things information so it register with people you know sometimes you get more in details so we don't mind you know once a year going over stuff like this because i think it's important um so we're gonna dig into that hey jay what's going on So, so go in. I guess we need to we need to link up and have some conversation. Go in says you think he thinks he has the best program, one of the best pro good production programs. So maybe we should bring you on and let you share it with with our with the family. All right, we should talk about that definitely bring you on so you can tell people what you're doing and what what's working for you and what you find that didn't work for you all right okay so um as i said share 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 for the people who are new to to our little gathering this is i go chat and we discuss anything and everything to do with small ruminants specifically goats because most of us are goat farmers and we also talk about operating and running a small farm, whether it, it, it deals with uh, registering your farm as a business or best practices in a small business, we cover it all. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the top 10 reasons you should be in the goat business. And for people who are not in Jamaica, international peop, um, viewers. Um, Jamaica is a goat meat population. They consume a lot of goat meat. We consume a lot of goat meat. So this list that I did put together, and this is based on really... <laughs> my observation, my research, and what we enjoy on the farm. So number one for us, based on the fact that we're Jamaican, is meat. And for those who don't know, goat meat is the most consumed meat worldwide. You know, in the eastern part of the world, Asian part of the world, goat meat is consumed a lot by you know, East Indians, um, all the, the Mandarin countries, you know, Philippines, all those countries out there eat a lot of goat meat. Africa, you guys should be very familiar with, you know, the, the lot of videos on goat farms in Africa. So goat meat is is well consumed across the world in various ways. Jamaicans love curry goat, but other nations will have different ways of preparing goat meat. So that's the number one reason you should be in the goat business because Jamaica consume a lot of goat meat. Everybody know like Christmas time, the prices of goat meat is just keep going up. Right now, I'm pretty sure a pound of goat meat is maybe $1,200, $1,300. I hear people selling it for $1,500. That's Jamaican dollars, by the way. Roughly a $1,500 Jamaican dollars would be about maybe $12 US, uh, somewhere around there. So if you get into getting into goat business, and it's from meat, as long as you come up with a good business model, you should be 
in business. It should be good. Um, the second thing is that second reason, I think, is you don't need a hell of a lot of space to have some goats compared to the size of cows and pigs. Goats don't need a lot of space. On the on paper, it's one mature cow to six goats. Even in grazing for pasture management, it's the space that one cow would take up, you can put six goats in that space. So that tells you that um, it's easier to deal with goats, especially when it comes to space. If you're limited on space, goats is, is the right choice for you. Right? Now, when it comes to the third thing is feeding. Cow eat a lot more than goats. At least about five or six times as much as goat eat. Right? And then goats come in comparison to pig and chicken and them things, you don't have to feed goats concentrate or grain. Goats can eat grass, shrubs, tree leaves, any kind of shrubs and grass and forage and all that stuff. Goats can eat it and they can do very well on it as long as it's good quality. Even when it's not the greatest quality, they will definitely produce on it. They may You may not be able to maximize or like, you know, speed up the growth rate compared to if you give them a little grain, but you won't be having dead animals because they can definitely survive on shrubs, trees, grass, and they eat a lot less than cows. So that's the third reason, I think, that if you're thinking about getting into livestock, goat is a good option. The fourth is the ability to produce in abundance. A goat's gestation period is five months. And for those who don't know what that means, it take from conception to give to kidding. It's five months, right? And most, for the most part, one female is going to give you twins or triplets or quads. Only like first timers mostly give you a single. However, for the most part, you're getting one female will give you, let's say, two kids, right? And that mother can go back in production three to four months later. Some goes go back in production, you know what I mean, even sooner than that. But safely, as per our vet's advice, Dr. Young advised that, for the body to recoup and for the mother to get back in condition three to four months. So, a mother, a female goat, a doe, can have three set of kids in two years. So if the if one female is having two kids each time, in two years, you you have seven goats from one. You go from one to seven in three years, in two years. So think if you have 10 females, how fast your numbers can go up if you're not selling any of them. 
Now we know you have to sell some for cash flow and thing, but the ability to scale with goats is all positive, tremendously faster than cows, for sure. Um, then the fifth reason for us is they're a lot easier to handle than cows, pigs, because if you're very friendly with your goats, then they're docile and become like pets and you can easily handle them, lead them to where you need them to go. Easy to treat them if something is wrong. And the best part about this is because of their size, a small person or a less physical person can actually handle them, can actually hold a goat for treatment, etc. So handling goats are a lot easier than for sure handling cows and pigs because the just the size alone and then their mentality their the way they the goats you know are easier to to become friendly and they follow you around and if you if you train them they'll do whatever you want you know what I mean so handling is high on the list is number five for us and Another point with handling is if, if something's wrong with the goat, you don't need a big, strong man to help you deal with it. Well, if it's a cow, you need like five, six people to deal with it. And plus you need chains and all kinds of stuff to hold that cow or build a, a, a thing to put the cow in and trap the cow in there and all of that stuff. But with goats, even if you have a whole lot of goats and a lot of them are not tame and that and stuff, but once you hold the goat, it's easy for, you know, to tie them up against a post or something. Or it's two people, one hold the goat, one treat the goat. So easier to handle. Number six, is goat meat is healthier than all the other red meat out there. And that's a scientifically proven. Less saturated fat, less calories. It's better for the system, easier to digest. Because goat system is closer to the human system than pH balance. So it's a much healthier meat. And if you process or butcher a goat on your farm, then it's easier to get that done compared to doing cow or pig. It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to handle. It's a lot easier to store. Everything about processing a goat is easier compared to cow and pig. Um, now, number seven is milk. And not only that milk is and a source of could can be a source of revenue in your goat business, but it's also you remember back in the day, you know, when we were kids, when I was a kid anyway, you know, I mean, people used to have cows and they milked the cow, and they everybody you know, it's in the neighborhood or at the house, they they get cow's milk for porridge or 
in your coffee or whatever it is, everybody, it's cow's milk. And um, now goat milk is better than cow's milk. Again, because of the pH balance, right? And it's sweeter. I find it sweeter. It's more, it's better to, to digest. It has better health benefits. If you're lactose intolerant, goat milk is tolerable. Um, and then the byproducts of goat milk, value added stuff, is an emerging market. Whether it's the cheese, the milk, the cheese, the lotion, the soap, all that is an emerging market. And you don't need two, three hundred goats to have a little value added business from goat milk because the, the, the amount of milk it takes to make soap it's not that much I know Trudy did a whole presentation on it a while back um, we'll resurface that video so people can be familiar with it but the value added product is in another source of revenue outside of the health benefits of the milk. So that's number seven. Number eight is byproducts and value-added products, which the manure, the droppings from the goats, is one of the best manure for farmers that plant vegetables, even the weed man them use it a lot, you know that weed legalize and there's a lot more you know, herb plantations going on. And the goat skin can make amazing um, bags, slippers, accent furniture pieces, all that stuff. It's just a matter of what your model is, what your business model is, and how you can utilize these things. I think every good farmer should seriously consider selling the droppings or reusing it on their farm, whether if they have a pasture or if they got a garden or something like that. Definitely don't let that just sit there and don't utilize it. That's, that's gold. We talked about that a while back. That is gold. The goat manure is amazing. So the man for byproducts, the manure, the hide, which is the skin, to make um, for an accent, furniture, slippers, hats, all that stuff, belts, whatever it is, that's an added value after if you if you're in meat and processing the goats, the skin don't just throw away the skin. Um, so that's number eight. Number nine is the impact goats have on the land. I, I don't know if you guys are aware, in some states in the U.S., some cities have contracts with goat farmers. They use the goats to manage um, parks, like state parks and to manage the, the 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 overgrown parks and even fire control because goats do such a good job of eating just about any of the plants that's that's there they'll trim the trees down to as high as they can reach there's videos online where you can see the before and after what the goats do to a grow overgrown piece of land. When the goats go through it, you can look right through it to the height where the goats can reach. You can look right through it when they're done because they definitely eat everything. So a lot of cities use goat farmers to come in 
and the mobile fences do the great job of keeping them contained. And so they can control parks, control trails, control uh, uh, fire to prevent forest fires and stuff. Yeah. So that's one impact they have. And you know that once the land is grazed or stuff like that, they grow back better, fresh grass. And it makes makes it the, the environment better. And then the goats compared to cows is less packing on the ground. So, you know, if you go in a cow pasture, you'll find a lot of holes, especially rainy time. You have to find a lot of holes and and mud areas because of how the cow trample it. Goats do not trample that like that because they don't have that weight. Right? So it's less destruction on the on the ground uh, when it comes to forest forage and pastures, all that stuff compared to the cows, right? Um, and as I mentioned, the browsing where they can trim the trees so you have sight lines. Um, so it's less impact on the environment. Number 10 is for us, for me, this, this is my best, my personal opinion is that they're way more fun than all the other livestock. Kids are cuter. Every most of our our mature goats, they got their own personalities. You can observe them and see how they react, how they interact with you. The kids are fun jumping around. You know, they they're easier to to become pets. You know, they you can train them to do things. As long as you give them treats and stuff. So to me, goats are just way more fun. They're way more fun, I find, than sheep. Definitely more fun than pigs. And they're, way, they're more fun than cows because of the ability to handle them and be close to them without the risk of getting trampled or... You know, I know there's a lot of cows that are friendly and stuff, but just the mere size of them will let a lot of people be tentative to pet a cow. I, you know, we got two cows, and I don't think I've ever pet one of them. You know, I would love for them to be tame enough for me to call them over and give them a carrot or something, but they only come close enough to look and not for me to touch them. Um, so that is the top 10, right? Now, I have some extras that I threw in here. Like, I find that goats in a natural state are a lot hardier, tougher animals than, you know, cows and pigs. Because if you remember, if especially you think about South Africa, the, the conditions that these goats live in, you know, like there's not a lot of forage. It's rocky areas. Goats love dry, rocky areas. So they're hardy. In Jamaica, you know, local goats, just the fact that you see them even downtown Kingston and they, they don't look skinny. There's no forage around, but they figure out how to survive and what they need to eat to survive. And they don't have worm problems because they're hardier animals. You know, once we start taking that hardiness out of them, then the rest is on us. We got to deal with it, right? But our native goats in Jamaica are very tough, hardy animals. So... The hardiness of them is is another benefit and another reason if you're thinking about 
livestock or goats, it's one of the reasons you should get into it. And then if you're thinking like, okay, I want to get into goat business and I wanted to do it, you know, have a nice little facility, the investment to get into goat business is a lot less than if you're starting a cooperation or a pig operation because of the, the, the amount of space you need, how you take care of them. Consider all that. The, the initial investment is a lot less. If you want to do a proper pig piggery, then you have to think about how, how, how much water you're going to need, building a pen, cleaning it. How do you clean it? How do you make sure that you're a friendly neighbor and your pig pen doesn't smell real bad? All of those things you got to consider getting into pigs, right? Cows, you need space for cows. No joke about it. You need space. The space you... You're going to put five cows in, as I mentioned before, that's 30 goats. If you're going to put five comfort, put five cows in a space comfortably, it's 30 cows, 30 goats. Do you know what I mean? Yes, King Royalty, goat meat is the best tasting meat for real. Um, so the initial investment to have a decent goat operation is l a lot less than when you think about pig, when you think about goat cows, and even maybe chicken. Because chicken, you have to buy them grain. Your chicken operation cannot be successful if you don't buy them grain. Whether it's layers or it's um, broilers for meat, you have to buy them grain. And as I said before, with goat, no grain. Don't have to give them grain. Just got to give them all kinds of shrubs, grass, tree leaves, everything. Any greenery that you think they'll eat, that they show you they'll eat, Give them that in abundance. If you have an open land, we won't talk about management and stuff and how to rotate through pastures and stuff. We're talking about just general feeding if you have five goats, ten goats, right? So the initial investment for goats is a lot lower than the other comparative livestock. Um, and then, um, I think that's it. That's all the, the exciting <laughs> reasons why you should get into good. Now, if you guys have any questions, let's, uh, discuss all the different topics. And if you guys disagree with some of them, let me hear it in the in the comments. And so we can have a discussion on it. Um, see, Howard says, don't forget the Elizabeth. His name is Howard. You left off the psychological benefits. Whenever, whenever I'm stressed at work, I go to videos of goats to help me relax. That is a big one. I think... Goats are more, what well, they call those animals, emotional support animals. For me, it is. I can stand there and look at kids for hours or look at the goats grazing for hours. Mind you, sometimes I'm looking for, you know, other things, data and all that stuff and just observing behavior, looking to see if an animal is healthy or not. But I really enjoy watching them graze. Hence why we don't do an intensive system. Because 
I like to see them out there. I think that's where they that's where they belong. You know, if it wasn't for Pradia Larsney in Jamaica, I would definitely just have goats out there all the time. Every I don't even I'll just be like sheds for production. Like the goat house and yard thing will just be for, you know, goats having kids and keep bucks away and all that stuff. Them goats will be out there 24 7 and every day we just move them to a new pasture. That's that's how I would love it. See, Robinson, mm, that's not the one. Um, Robinson Goat Farm says, I talk to my goats. I know they don't talk back, but the way they operate, they understand. I can tell you that I think for real, like sometimes the things I say to the goats, I think they either they understand or they feel it or something. You know, there's a few goats we have there that I just need to walk up and call their name and say, come in, and they're, they're coming. I don't know if because they're already pets type goats, so they see you, they come. But I just feel like they, they know, they understand. Um, King Royalty, how is the artificial insemination program there in Jamaica, for example, is it expensive? Um, I don't think it's expensive. I think it's very reasonable. I think the success rate needs to go up. However, there's a lot more options available compared to two, three years ago when it comes to semen. Um, Dr. Young and her team is doing an amazing job. Now the government has a new program, which is a livestock development program that they're issuing or handing out, whichever way you want to call it, semen to farmers across the country. Um, I don't know the process of how they select the, the, the farmers. However, they're doing AI on animals across the country, cows and goats. So I think that program is already started. So there's it's coming along. You know, there's more options. If you have your money, you can definitely get AI done. I would love to see the success rate go up. Um, but you can get really good semen. You know, a very good friend of uh, the goat sector who is a top breeder in Texas, Samuel Golding. He has semen um, through Nutramix. Um, Nutramix has semen through another top um, genetic uh, company in the U.S. So, yeah, it's improving. Um, any other questions? So we talked about the, the top 10 reasons, in my opinion. Meat is number one. The small space. You only need... You don't need a big space to start compared to what a cow needs. You know, I think a goat only need, if you're housing a goat 24 7 in a space, you only need like a 10 by 10 space. Well, you need exercise space. So I would do, say, a 20 by 20 if the animal is. Is permanently in there, not going anywhere. But if the animal's going grazing and coming in, you just need a ten by ten space, really. You know, some of our isolations pens is like six by five or six by six, if for sick animals and stuff. So they're not there long term, but it just goes to show you that you don't need a lot of space. You know, and then. That's number three. I went to feeding. 
and goats eat a lot less than cows. Goats don't eat grain. So pigs are out of the question. Chickens out of the question. Um, and for people who graze and understand and do research on grazing, it's where I get that six goats to, to one cow, that's where I got it. You know, in a lot of grazing formats, yeah, the space that's needed to graze a cow for a year, you can graze six goats in that same space for the year. And then the ability to produce. Can anybody tell me the, 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 the word? There is a word that's used for the ability to produce in abundance. I'm going to type it because I don't know how to pronounce it. That's the word. That word, fisonditi, or fic, I don't know how to pronounce it. I should actually ask Siri or somebody or one of them things. But I looked it up to find out if there's a word. When I was putting together the show, I looked it up, and that's the word I found. But it's the ability to produce in an, in an in abundance. And thanks to the fact that they produce multiple offsprings for the most part, and the gestation period is only five months compared to cows. I know pigs are shorter, I think, but um, you get the gestation period and the, the multiples, so it's not bad. Well, I know pigs are way more productive but we all know the drawbacks of pigs right um king royalty i saw one of your interviews where a gentleman discussed that shipping goes to jay is a challenge what about the semen does the government allow you to import your own um yes the government allow you to import your own semen However, you're responsible for storage, um, transportation, all that stuff. However, here's a catch. The company in the U.S. that is willing to do what it takes to meet the criteria to import semen and embryos and stuff in Jamaica, they have an exclusive deal with Nutrimix. So... BND Genetics. So they're the only ones right now that I know of outside of OC Flock in Canada that can send semen to Jamaica, are willing to go through all the screening and all the collecting uh, procedures to send semen to Jamaica. OC Flock in Canada has done it. However, since... Nutrimix has a, an exclusive deal with them, then it just makes more sense you just deal with Nutrimix and let Nutrimix. I know they're gonna there's gonna be a markup, but you know, time is money. If you have to take the time to go do all that and get your own container and all that stuff to deal with it, then you might as well you let Nutrimix do it. And then Nutrimix will Dr. Young and her team can come and do the procedure. Yeah, Natty from Chelsea Best Farm. Um, yeah, pigs increase faster, but the input is a lot more. You know, to run a proper piggery, so you're um, what I call a friendly neighbor, it, 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 it needs a lot more input. You use a lot more water. You know what I mean? Dealing, cleaning, all that stuff, it's, it's a lot more input. So, here you go. 
Yeah, water usage for pigs. Crazy. You know what I mean? Our good friend Peter McCook is not on tonight. I haven't seen him. But, um, you know, he and I have conversation all the time about the amount of water that's needed to run his piggery. Which, wow. If you don't have proper water source and a lot of water, then pig thing is not, maybe not. Howard Benjamin, welcome. Thank you for joining us, Bridget. Um, Yeah, so pigs may multiply and produce a lot more faster, but you think about the input you got to put in. So we're looking at the grand scheme of things. And as I said, you know, what the cost is to start up. Now, then we got to number five, which is easier to handle. And we all know, we see it, videos, pictures, people just love holding goats, kids. You know, it's easy to tie up a goat and tri trim the hoofs and spray them, you know, clip horn, cut horns, or whatever you need to do, dress a wound. It's just a lot easier to handle them. You know, so that was number five. And I'm still waiting. If you guys have questions or any any um, additional information you want to share, by all means, put it in the comments. Um, and then we talked about the healthier meat, the, taste, the meat tastes better. Um, somebody mentioned that earlier. Yeah, best tasting meat. We all know. Jamaicans eat a lot of curry goat, but I'd love for Jamaicans to explore a di other ways of preparing goat meat. On Cabra Ranch, we do, you know, we do it in stew, we do it on the grill, lasagna, burgers, any way we can try the goat meat, we try it. Because we actually don't really cook curry goat because we can get curry goat anytime, anywhere. So we try different things. You know, think Christmas, I put the whole rump on the, on the grill and slow cook that. It was just amazing. Amazing. So we need to get into that so we give more options. Yeah, you know what I mean? See, Natty says, yeah, we need need more butchers to who knows how to do the cuts. And it's funny, it's not hard because it's, you know what I mean, the the way to cut it, there's information all over the internet on how to do it, on the way to cut it. You know what I mean? Cruz, if Cruz is still here, I printed off the, the, the sheet and gave it to Cruz so Cruz can learn how to do it. Yeah, roast goat, trust me, um, unbelievable. Like jerk, I did like a jerk sauce under the rump and overnight make it so keen, put it on the grill, slow cook it. And the meat just, and mind you, it was not some old goat in us, so it's nice eight month or nine month goat. So the meat just fall off the bone. Crazy, amazing, delicious meat. You know, all the flavors are in it because it just had time to, you know, cook. It didn't just nice and slow. Yeah, everything is on YouTube, man. Everything is on YouTube. Anything you need to do, somebody took the time to post it. You just got to find the one that, I suggest if you're going to research something on YouTube, watch like five, six videos of that one thing. And then you get an idea of what's the correct way to do it. You know what I mean? And also take in consideration what your environment is and how it best applies to you. You know? Um, so then... We went on to seven and talk about milk, right? 
and we are we know milk the pH balance of milk is closer to humans for goat milk is close the pH balance of goat milk is closer to humans pH balance so it's easier to digest the health benefits are are, are known and if you're lactose intolerant goat milk is to- is more tolerable than cow's milk for you and personally I think it's sweeter and not to mention the value added products that we talked about you know the cheese the lotion the soap um there's just if just bottle the milk and put it on and sell it on the shelf you know um there's body wash like the there's a long list of value added stuff from goat milk you know and then the goat itself, manure, the skin. You can do arts, pieces with the skin, accent furniture, drums, hats, belts, slippers, jackets, whatever you want to do with it. You know? Um, see, Howard, yes, Howard, I see you tried goat cheese the other day. Yeah, goat cheese is amazing. Anybody haven't haven't tried goat milk yet? They need to give it a shot. Like it is amazing. And Cabo Ranch will be rolling out their milk products later this year. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then we got into the impact of goats on the environment or your property you know as i mentioned the compaction for cows when they walk or in the wet time and they trample that ground if you go in cow pasture there's so many deep holes and stuff because of the weight of the animal it's not that way with goats so goats do less damage walking around plus they they they're browsers so they eat above their shoulders for the most part if they can so when it comes to deforestation goats are ideal as i mentioned in some cities in the u.s they use goats to manage deforestation and fire for fire forest fire prevent prevention programs and even just um managing um overgrowth in uh national parks or city parks, whatever it is. And even um, they use sheep and goats for managing solar farms. You know what I mean? So the impact is is better. Um, King Royalty wants to know, how is the overall market for goats and goat product from your experience being? Um, in Jamaica, you can never have enough goats to sell or goat meat. That's why the prices keep going up, supply and demand. Every so often we have this conversation that goat meat, the prices of goat and the prices of goat meat is getting ridiculous. I personally think it's getting ridiculous. However, it's because people are willing to pay for it. It's simple. People are willing to pay for it. The, the scary part is, is goat meat going to become an elite choice? That's the scary part, you know? Once upon a time, you go dance and party, curry goat is a must. Curry goat and white rice is a must. Now, is it going to be that way much longer? I don't know. So we have to take note and pay attention to what's going on. Do we need more animals in the system? For sure we do. Do we need more professionals to manage how they run their goat operation to lower costs? and um, improve production for sure so 
we'll just see how it goes. We're here as Cabo Ranch I go chat platform to educate people and share information and hopefully we we arm people with information so they can do a better job with their operation, which helps increase production in the goat business. Shane. Okay, Shane, by the end of April, I'm going to put up a video with an update on the farm. All right? I got to respect your, your persistence, bro. I'm going to do that for you. Um, other, um, Gawain says, other farmers starting to buy graded bucks from me to fatten at 45K and 50K for Christmas. I don't know how. I don't understand the math that makes a man buy a goat, a ram goat, a buckling for 40 or 50,000, turn around, process it, and sell it and make a money. How do they make profit on that? What price point? I guess Christmas, any price goes. Yeah, I remember last Christmas, people were telling me they're getting goat meat for $1,500, $1,600 a pound. I don't understand. Somebody needs to explain to me how that works. As I said, the prices are going through the roof. It, 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 it comes to a point where, as I said earlier, goat meat will become only for certain people that can afford it. Only certain people that can afford the fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a pound will buy goat meat. Or, well, yeah. And then the rest of us will just eat it at special times of the year. You know, Christmas, birthday, I don't know, maybe independence or something. Because somebody buying a goat, a goat of forty five thousand dollars. And if he if the if you if you divide if you do the math and say that's f at five hundred dollars a pound live weight, it doesn't even add up. You know, because you're not weighing the goat, you're just like saying, yo, four to five thousand, there's no price. I don't understand. So, all, all I can, the advice I give people, you just come up with a model for your business. Don't watch the increasing prices. Watch your bottom line, how much input you're putting in, what, is, what your input's costing you, cost of production, and what is a reasonable profit margin. If you get greedy then you're not going to be in a sustainable business. You know what I mean? Because the objective is to always have product on the market. That's my opinion. You know, it's not twice a year or three times a year. If you're really getting into meat, then you have to come up with a production system that's going to have consistent product on the market whether it's you have a small group of people that you're selling to on a monthly basis or every two weeks I, I keep saying it that's the way you start that's the way you start so you are you you learn how to commit to delivering once a month or twice a month to five people ten people get that system down figure out how you raise the animals, where you get the animals to deliver to those five or 10 people. And then you scale from there.
you know, here's Howard Benjamin giving a suggestion. I would encourage farmers to sell goated soup on weekends. You can make crazy money. Yeah. You do the math and figure out if it's profitable, if it makes sense financially. Lucien, you just made it. Thanks for, for, for coming through anyways. Appreciate it, bro. Um, so, you know what I mean? Gawain says he sells wieners every four months. Yeah, you know, you got a consistent production system going there. You know, now you got to figure out how it works or you get it down to two months. Every two months. It's hard. I know. We, <laughs> we're in the middle of that, so I know how hard it is. That's real management. That's serious, intense management. If you have product, wieners, every two months. And we've been doing it since last year. Um, where exactly is Cabo Ranch located? Cabo Ranch is in the Highgate area of St. Mary. That's where we are. Close to Miramount High School. So go in, as I said, we should have a conversation and get you on to talk about uh, your production system and how you go about achieving this amazing um, results that you're getting, you know, how you schedule it out, how you are, uh, the records you keep, how you execute it all, because that's a big, to me, that's big success that we've been talking about for two, three years now is come up with a production system that makes you have consistent product on the market. And it increases your productivity for the year. You know? <laughs> and it, for the people who follow us on socials, you know, Cabo Ranch, at Cabo Ranch, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you can consistently see that every two months we restock the Wiener's Lounge. Every two months since 2020, end of 2020 is when that schedule got on track. You know, now this year we're trying to even tighten it up more as I mentioned at the top of the year with our year-end roundup and update, we're shooting for 150 kids on the ground for this year. That's some serious management. But we can do it. I think we can do it. We just have to you know, make sure that we stay on point. Make sure the system is well managed. So yeah, go in. We'll talk about it. We'll uh, share some information with the people because it's important. Um, so I think that's it. That's that's all I got. I know it's short and spicy. Um, tonight, but um, that's all the topics I come up with. And if there's any more questions, I'll gladly take them. Um, do I use cedar? Do you use cedar to facilitate synchronizing breeding? Okay, so I haven't used cedar yet. Our plan is this summer because we use all the last year to observe and take date, um, record data on how they 
the goats breed throughout the year. And we find that the summertime was a lot slower. There's two reasons I'm considering cedar. One, in the slow, in the summer when they the cycle slows down, I want to use cedar. Now, the other reason is to tighten my kidding period. If I use cedar, then the, the females will be in heat in a shorter window. So that means they'll kid out in, let's say, three weeks, a month, instead of six weeks. So then I have these mothers go back in production sooner. You know, have that group go back in production sooner. And the kids will be grouped in age closer. So I have a more even um, set of kids. Instead of kids being, you know, six weeks apart or whatever. I would love to tighten it up. So I can have more um, kidding periods in the year. But yeah. Cedars will be used this summer, and I will keep you guys posted on that. I'll share everything. How can I purchase ear tax for animals? I think, I think Hypro Ace has ear tags. Anybody in here, give me a thumbs up if that's if they if that's true. I, I saw it there um, earlier this year or last year, or you can import it, order it online from Amazon or Premier One um, and get it. They're not expensive. So um, farm stores won't have it. You have to check. You have to check Hypro. It's the big store out in Spanish though. No. You got to try that. Or order it online. And the beauty about ordering things online now, you can do that. Um, you can do it from Jamaica easy now because all these courier companies that are, are uh, allowing you to order from Amazon or wherever and and they'll ship it in for you. Um, any more questions? Any other comments, opinions? Let's, uh, um, so San Santina is asking online the farmers overseas who have access to cedar which is actually a CIDR, um, from their tractor supply, is it that accessible to farmers here? Cedar is also available on Amazon. It is in Jamaica, but I think they charge, I think Dr. Young and them charge like $3,000 per insert. When the bag of 20 is about hundred and. 40 US dollars. Yeah. So it's a matter of um, what you can afford to do and how many animals you need to do. But in the grand scheme of things, I think it's worth it if you use it properly and it increases your production. I think it's worth it. Okay. Hey, David, no problem, man. We're here to help. As a collective, we'll help each other grow, share information, and um, definitely help the court business overall. That's what we're about. Move the needle in a positive way. We'll always say that every time. Um. 
any other questions. You guys, there's no stupid questions, you know. Only I will give stupid answers. If, but there's no stupid questions. No question is stupid or simple or none of it. This is the goat business. I learn stuff every day. Um, so if you have any other questions or any other input, if you're doing something that you think will bring value to us as a as a as a community, please share. You know? And if you want to come on the show to talk about something, all you gotta do is hit me up. All you gotta do is hit me up. And we sort it out. If you think you have something to say or you're passionate about something and you want to come on and talk about it and share your views, hit me up. Because that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. All right. Well, with that said, I will bid you all. Oh, another question. How do you get to producing goats every two months? Okay. Here's what we do. And I showed you guys, I think I showed a video there the, the other few months ago. And I actually discuss at the top of the year, I discuss how I'm going to increase my, my breeding cycles. So we do what we call group breeding. So we select animals, select females that is going to go to Rico, which is a Nubian, and another group that's going to go with Samson. So then in the maintenance lounge, we separated it, split it down the middle to a separation. And on one side, Rico had some females, and the other side, Samson had some females. So they're there with with the females for 45 days. After that 45, those 45 days, we pull them and do pregnancy test and give them a break about a month. And the next group is going in. They just got pulled. So the next group is going in at the end of April here. Uh, Sam's is not going to go in, but um, Appleton is going to go in. That's the other boar buck. But Rico is going to go back in. So we got to recondition him. So that's what we do to get production every two months. And it's a cycle. And we can't have a bottleneck. If we don't move, if we don't move kids out of the house to the Wiener's Lounge, then we end up with a bottleneck because mothers are in the house right now to kid this month. And as you guys see, we just weaned a bunch of kids. So these mothers are going to have kids this month and th their kids will be weaned at the end of May into June and the cycle goes. So I'm trying to do... I'm trying to do I'm trying to do at least five kidding periods this year. That's what I'm trying to do. Um so David is asking a little off topic, but do you know what I can use to eradicate potato slips? which I've taken over my pastures. Not sure that is the correct name of these parasitic runners. Okay, so David, if your goats are not eating it, then you got to get rid of it. But if they eat it, I don't know what the plant look like. If you're talking about those runners and stuff, I know the ones that my goats eat, they love it. And apparently it's high in crude protein. So, um, if you think it's take if it's taking up too much of your pastures, you're not getting grass. What you need to do is cut it out and let the grass grow up, and then let it grow in between the grass. 
Do you know what I mean? Because you want that diversity, especially if the goats them love it. But if it's killing your grass completely, then you don't want that. But if you completely take it out, it may come back, but at least it, it let the grass come up. And then it can come up and grow in between the grass. That's what I would do. Um, the group size, um, Natty, is the last group, there was 18 goats with, with um, Rico and 23 with uh, Samson. And out of all of those, we had 18. Con um, so far, we have 18 confirmed pregnancies. So there's another round of um, pregnancy tests in three weeks, two weeks, because we just pulled them. So we still have to test them to see if he did anything at a lot of part of the of the 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 period. So we're gonna test the rest of them, and hopefully we have more pregnancies, um, and we just keep it moving. My objective is to have at least, we'd love to ideally have 20 pregnant mothers each time. Sometimes it goes on to 16, 15, but ideally I'd, I'd love to have 20. I could go, go as high as 25. So, David, if the goats won't eat it, get rid of it. Pull it out. Yeah, Nati. So that's what we're doing. That's um, it. It is. It is intense pro um, production management, but the returns worth it. The returns worth it. Trust me. You know, you, because it's just consistency. And then you get into the mode of kidding. Kidding, you just know. Kidding is every two months. You know, you just, it's just a cycle. It's just, that's the way the system works. That's what we do on the farm. We don't wait three, four months or six months for kidding. Every two months, there's kidding. You know? Sometimes isolate, isolated pregnancy or breeding happens where, you know, kidding roll into kidding. May not be a whole lot, but you may have two or three mothers out of nowhere that, you know, in the middle of the time that they got serviced. And because we don't miss, we don't miss any heat. We, not because we have a schedule or grouping or whatever. If there's a goat that's in heat and we're like, oh yeah, she's in condition to go. Yeah, she'll get service. We're not missing that opportunity. We're not missing it. We're not taking that risk. So if we visually see a goat in heat, yeah, we're going to get that goat serviced. Even if she's not in a breeding group. If she's even if she's in the milk program and she goes in heat, yep. Let her get serviced. Can't afford to miss any chance of conception. Can't afford it. All right, folks. So that's it for me tonight. And thank you guys for being here. Thank you all for showing up. Everybody that participate, I appreciate you all. And uh, see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Bless up, everyone. Have a great rest of the weekend. And we'll see you next week. All right. Thank you.